Hello guys, my name is Oinda Mala Shinoda and yes, welcome back to my channel and yes, um, it's been a while that I've been away, of course, <laughs> life has been happening and I'm just glad that I'm able to sit down and film your video and yeah, thank you for still subscribing despite no video, thank you, thank you I don't when I see subscription, I'm like, I've not posted anywhere, I'm not subscribing, thank you and please share with your friends like comment let's engage the video let's have a conversation on the this video i would really love it to hear your opinion about this so today i'm going to be talking about um the waiting season and um just really encouraging you through the waiting season because um it's been a revolutionary time for me as well so i just felt like you know what let's just encourage each other you know there's no harm in that you know yeah so let's get to the the waiting season is quite an interesting one in the sense that um everyone goes through the waiting season as long as you're working with god you're gonna have different seasons in your life where you're just going to be waiting on God, either for a change in your career, for for an instruction in moving in a different direction for your home, or even in your um, marital, just in different aspects of life generally, even to launch into what God has called you to be, and you would learn different things. And I just wanted to share some things that have been in my heart concerning this, and I hope that it blesses you. So, number one, the waiting season is not a season to dread. It's not a season that you want to, you know, be like, I, I just want to get out of this season. You cannot pray your way out of this season. You can't fast your way out of this season. This is not the season for that. This is a season where you learn to trust God. You learn to trust that God's way are best for you. You learn to walk with God without seeing blueprints. You learn to work with God without seeing the calculation in it, without seeing how it's going to make sense. This is where we actually begin to grow depth, you know. So this season is not a season where you begin to dread, but it's a season where you begin to trust God, rely on God, lose your calculation, lose your all your permutation of how oh, you want to do this at this age, at this that. You lose all of that and you just trust God and trust that God, I, I love to say that God is a responsible father. He will not give you what you don't need. He will not withhold what you do not, what you need from you. He's a good father. He cannot withhold anything good from you. That's what I tell myself. I say, my father is a good father. He cannot withhold anything good from me. And I want you to be reassured about that too. He can, if, he, if you need it, he will give it to you. He knows the best timing. So this is a time to truly trust God and just lose all, you know, your ambitions and just trust God completely. So that leads me to my second point. This is a time where you are equipped. Oh, things will come out that you will not believe that this is you. Revelation about you. A lot of things that you don't like, ah, I don't know I have the capacity to be this. You will surprise yourself with some good deeds. You know, the Lord is forming you to become like him. He is shaping you to bear fruit just like him. So that when they see you, Christ be seen, not you. Because you have been crucified with Christ. So when they see you, they no longer see you in the mala. They see Christ. That's where God is trying to take you to. And so you have to submit yourself for that equipping. I know that it's difficult. It looks like my, your life is not making sense now. My life is like, ah, nothing is adding up. But this is the time where God is equipping you. You are growing roots in your Christian work. And this is a time where you want to really submit to the process. And that leads me to my third point. You know, whenever I think of the waiting season, I look at the life of Joseph and that beautiful dream he had. And the reason why I'm even using the life of Joseph and not David, where David was anointed and all that, is because he had a dream. And just like me and you, God might have showed us a dream. He might have showed us a vision. He might, he might, there might have been some prophetic utterance over our lives, you know, where it's so strong. God has said he's going to do this. 
but nothing is looking like it as a matter of fact it looks like you are going in a in a different direction from what god has said i want to reassure you that in this season the season to be joyous be diligent just like joseph he was diligent in the house of potiphar and he was made the head over everything you want to be diligent in this season make sure that everything that you're doing you're doing it to the glory of god in this season be diligent and be concerned about other people you know so this leads me to my next point which is be concerned about other people live beyond you live beyond you joseph was able to you know despite being in the prison you know if you're in prison you should be bitter he wasn't bitter he was able to take notes oh he had a dream he's concerned about this dream i could interpret it for you you know he could he was able to live beyond himself live beyond yourself in this season and you know it was even the dream that he interpreted for his the people in the prison as well that even helped him to where God has God was God was planning for him. He's deciding to look beyond yourself and begin to live for the things that God is concerned with. For also to because there are things going on in your friend's life. Things are going for them. Things that prayers are are getting answered for them. Be joyful. Rejoice with them. Rejoice with them. Ask them how can I be of help to you? What would you need me to do for you in this season? Just serve with all of your heart. I know that this might not be like what you're expecting to hear, but I I kid you not, it's the best decision you want to make for yourself in this season. You want to rejoice with other people, you want to participate in their success, you want to contribute, you want to see how you can just be of help to them in that season. And um another thing you want to learn in this season is you want to pick up the lessons God, that God is enlightening. You want to pick up the things. You want to write. You want to document it. You need to document it. You need to write these things because these things are going to be blueprints that you're going to use to help other people. When, you know, the waiting season is going to be tough on other people. You want to just encourage them. So pick up the lessons. Pick up the lessons. And another thing I would like to say that in this season, you want to have friends like my friends who can also pray and uphold you in prayers because trust me at times you'll be weak at times it'll be like people you just need people to just pray for you to just receive strength and yes you need to pray a lot for mercy and strength you need to ask god to please have mercy and strengthen you because you're not trying to hurry out of the season and you're not trying to just force things but you're trying to just wait when you need his strength please don't fast and pray out of fear like, don't make, make sure that you're fasting this season because you're fasting out of fear that, oh, maybe the devil is... In. Be at rest. Be at rest. Yes, we are not ignorant of the rise of the enemy, but when you're aware that God is the one walking out this season, be at rest and just partner with God on this. And God is going to lead you all right. Also, I want to say that write out the promise of God for this season. You need to remind yourself because trust me your mind will be playing games you will need to remind yourself over and over and over again so i would say write those promises down declare those promises over your life and you will be glad when you look back and you realize that every single thing the bible says that he watches over his word you know the day i saw that scripture i was so excited like He's watching over his word. It cannot not come to pass. It has to come to pass. It is already settled. God can be trusted. And I just want to just encourage you as you wait on God in this season that God can be trusted. God can be trusted. He can be trusted. I want to read this scripture to you. And um, this scripture is in Isaiah 50 verse 7. Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like it's like a stone, determined to do to do His will, and I know that I will not be put to shame. I want this to be your resolve: set your face like a flint, so that you be determined that you want to do the will of the Father, and you will watch God hold on you in this season. I want to encourage you: be of good cheer. God has overcome. This is just a face. It might be tough. It might look like you're wasting your life. It might look like, oh, there's, you, it's like you're trying, you're tired of even explaining yourself because it doesn't make sense. Please hold on. 
God is coming for you. And when it comes, everything you'll be glad you waited. Don't despair. Don't let your heart be troubled. The Lord will be with you in this. Moment.